bonus episode today and very warm welcome to the man behind the scenes. Welcome everyone, Ibuka Ezeke. Ibuka, it's so good to have you now in front of the microphone. <laughs> Hi Joe, um, it's really a pleasure to be here. <laughs> I am really happy to be here. <laughs> and I'm very happy that we're doing this together. So um, you and I, we have basically launched the podcast that's mm -hmm. now approaching. Do you know? Do we have the count? How many episodes we've done so far? Something we like have, um, yeah, close to a hundred. Okay, so yeah. um, maybe this was will be the one hundredth episode. Oh, let's make it the one hundredth episode. Wouldn't that be funny? Cool. <laughs> um, a lot of, a lot of um work went into it um okay so let's get started we are we are working together in, in the two organizations that we're mm -hmm. running access to perspectives and Africa archive yeah um, you came in mostly for well project management different aspects social media management you're doing um social media postings for atp and Africa archive yeah. and the process management of the podcast but before we talk about how that's going for you can you mm -hmm. maybe share a little bit about your background um what you've studied um you're based in nigeria or you're nigerian yeah. um yeah just a little bit on how mm -hmm. yeah how how we came to work together and what led you to to this place where we are now Okay, um, thank you very much, Ju. <laughs> um, let me start with the introduction. Okay, my name is, the full name is Chukwebuka Iziki, and I believe you know that, okay? I know, sorry. But then, yeah, then for short, no, it, it's not like I'm correcting you, you're still correct, right? Okay. But then the shorts, we prefer to make it shorter for most people who find pronouncing it difficult, right? So the short name is Ibuka, and then the full name means God is great. God is great. Mm. So that's my name. I'm from Anambra State in Nigeria. Nigeria has 36 states. So I'm from Anambra State in the southeastern part of Nigeria. And I happen to be the first in um, a family of five children. And um, I grew up in Kaduna State, Nigeria. I did my nursery school, primary school, my school. In Kaduna, and then for university, I went to the Federal University of Technology, Mina, Niger State, mm -hmm. also in northern Nigeria. So, all my academic life has been in northern Nigeria, so it's been great. So, um, I, I, after my secondary school, I applied for admission to study physics. Mm -hmm. But before then, I actually applied three times to study engineering, but I was rejected. But then it was on the third time when I applied for physics that I got the admission to study physical electronics in the Federal University of Technology. And I ask you yeah. there, why what, did you want to become an engineer and then later physics? Was that a second guess after physics because, uh, after well, engineering because it was still closed or... Were there particular topics that you found interesting or people that influenced you into that direction? Well, actually, I, I went for physics because it was related. But then, you know, growing up at that time in high school, we don't have so much picture as to what career path to take, right? So we just more like go on with the frenzy, what's what's you know, happening everywhere, what everybody's taking up to, right? So most times it was just engineering and then, you know, mm -hmm. I felt, okay, I should apply engineering, but then I I got rejected at the university. Or let me just say, I didn't get through. I didn't get the admission. I did science. So I still wanted a field that's, that's close to engineering. So I decided to take up physics. So I applied physics and then got the admission in in 2011, and then I studied physics for five years at mm -hmm. the Federal University of Technology, Mina, Niger State. So I graduated with distinction in 2016. And after that, I went for my national service. I don't know if um, it happens in Germany, 
But yeah. in Nigeria here, there is a, a mandatory one year service mm -hmm. after your university education. So I was posted to Benue State, a state in um the Middle Belt region of Nigeria. So I served for one year and I was posted to a community, a local community there in Benue State. So we're expected to use all of the ideas we got from um, the university to help build the socioeconomic like life of the community you're posted to. Mm -hmm. So the, the people we met there were actually very interesting. They were lively people and I actually enjoyed my stay there in Benue State. So after that... What was so enjoyable there? Yeah, mm -hmm. their, their lifestyle, their food, they were, yeah. you know, very hospitable people, you know, mm -hmm. very welcoming. Their music, they have this kind of music and this kind of um, unique dance style, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they are called the Igede people of Binary State. So mm -hmm. it was just so, so beautiful to have served in that state. Mm -hmm. So I, I did that for one year before moving on to teach physics in a high school. So mm -hmm. I, also, I, also, I also taught physics during my one year service in Benue State. So I taught physics for one year in um, high school as well. And after that, I actually resigned because I felt I wasn't getting as much fulfillment, both financial wise, and otherwise so i just had to leave i resigned and then went into banking because i felt okay it's going to provide a lot more finance you know mm. um, because i had i had people who were looking up to me to help them solve one or two issues financially so i had mm. to look for a better option that works so um, my dad's friend who was then um, the bank manager actually um, made way for me to start working as a sales representative at the bank. So I worked in the bank for three and a half years. So mm -hmm. while I was doing that, I was also working um, as a freelancer. Yeah, um, I actually skipped that. During my year at the university, my friends actually introduced me to freelancing. So it was mm -hmm. from them I learned how to, you know, freelance and you know, get clients and get paid while doing works online. So I was doing my invest I was doing my um freelancing job alongside my you know bank work. So I think that's about that. And uh, from there, that was how I got to meet Joe. I got to meet you. And <laughs> we have been working ever since from then. I think that was um last was it last year? Yeah, it was last year up I Right, I yeah, think it the about a year ago or longer. Yeah, yeah, I think um, it was the ending of two thousand and um twenty one. Yeah, oh. and then we started fully in twenty twenty two up until this time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I remember I reached out on several platforms to find freelancers, and there's this things like Fiverr and others, and you were also registered at Fiverr. Yeah, I was, but I I can't even remember clearly where. I met you. I can't say if it's if it was five or Facebook. I think it was Facebook. Oh, Facebook yeah. yeah. So there's also yeah, Facebook so. groups. Or yeah. so the thing is with with people like me, solo entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. you can't really afford to employ someone um at yeah. certain um income stages, or it's a bit mm -hmm. risky. I've also done this for some time, and then it's been difficult because there's just so many expenses, even though the work's not being done. So to work with freelancers leaves more freedom yeah. and security for both parties actually normally yeah um so you don't have as much risk you get you only pay once the job is done mm -hmm. but you also need to be able to explain what you want to have done as a service yeah. um and that's not so easy as i thought it would be <laughs> but um so mm -hmm. we've been working together through de defining your tasks and yeah the way I then realized I wanted to have it done to reflect what we stand for as an institution. Yeah. So that's some things where where both of us have gained a lot of experience, I think. Yeah. And also working with different people over the years. Um 
but everyone is different and then it's a matter of learning on either end also for freelancers to to learn your clients or to learn about how your clients tick basically or what the expectations are so it's yeah. a lot about expectation management anyways but it's but for institutions like ours where you don't have the budget to have a full fledged staff mm. of several people running an organization yeah. it's it's working through freelancers and that's how we got to how we met and got to work started working together and also yeah. others who are on the team yeah okay so and then we decided to how did we start the podcast can I hardly remember but either way yeah. but then we oh yeah I, think I, I introduced I re- you to if you're willing to no yeah share your version yeah I actually remember you asked me if I had experience with um um editing audio files mm-hmm. and I said yes and you asked me if I had um experience with um podcasting I and I also told you yes um, even though I've not actually worked with anyone on podcasting, but mm-hmm. then I have the experience because at a particular time, I was trying to start up my own podcast. So I was mm-hmm. recording and editing some files myself. So that was the experience I had. And you felt um, that was good enough. And <laughs> we scheduled a meeting and, you know, we took it up from there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then... And I had worked with a podcast before as a team member. It's called PhD yeah. Career Stories, also listed on our website. Um, yeah. where I learned what process is necessary necessary to not only record and have the fun part of con- conversing with people around whatever topic, but then yeah. also getting it published <laughs> and and adding the jingle, intro, outro. Like it's actually quite a bit of work. Yeah. Um. And it's so helpful that you said you were willing to help me with that so that I can mm-hmm. focus on the fun, for me, fun things. And I, <laughs> yeah, not that, not to say that it cannot be fun. I also enjoyed like editing some of the episodes or kind of, but then it's, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a task that needs to yeah. be done. It takes time and running a business has too many. So it's a, the trick is to learn which ones you are good at and which ones you better delegate. So I think yeah. that's surely one thing I I was smart enough to delegate to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so would you now for those listeners out there who don't know much about podcasting other than listening to them, mm-hmm. yeah. what does it entail? What's the what's the process in getting the podcast out to the listeners? Yeah, I, I, I'm all, to start with, I must say it's been fun so far. And um, the, the processes are actually overwhelming, a little, but I think they are straightforward, right? So I, it starts with having a concept of what you actually want to discuss on your podcast, right? You have to dis- um, decide what theme you want to discuss, what topic or what's the genre you want to go into right so you, you can decide to um go into education or music or sports or talk about business on your podcast platform so once you have that sorted out so the next thing is recording right so you can choose what platform to record in you can either decide to record on zoom as your platform for recording or on Anchor FM or any of those um you know online recording platforms. So once you do that, you get your recorded file as soon as you're done recording and edits, you add your intros, outros, and whatever you want to, you know, edit out, whatever you want to add in, you can always do that. And then there are softwares you can use to do that now. We have um, Garage Band, we have Audacity, we have um, Adobe Audition. So these are softwares that can be used to you know, edit audio files. Mm. So once you do that, you can then upload it on Anchor.fm. So you should have an, have an account at Anchor.fm. So that once you're done editing your file, you just upload to Anchor.fm. So Anchor works in such a way as to help you disseminate your podcast, right? So once you have it uploaded on Anchor, Anchor helps you to send it directly to Spotify, which is um, 
a podcast playing platform and a music platform as well. And currently, Anchor has been um, or has created an angle or a section for podcasters, which is um, called um, Spotify for Podcasters. So apart from disseminating to Spotify, Anchor also helps you to disseminate to other directories like um, Pocket Casts, like um, Google Casts, like um, Stitcher, and so many of them, right? So all you need to do is sign up on those accounts and use the RSS feed to, you know, distribute your podcast to all of these channels. And then listeners get to, you know, hear you on, on these platforms. So I, I think that's the process. Mm -hmm. And then um, after that, you can also decide to disseminate on social media. Of course, okay. that will help you to, you know, grow your business because one of the key things, one of the key things a podcast does is to help you grow your business. So you can use the podcast to grow your business. So once you're done um, disseminating on the directories, you can also disseminate on social media platforms. You can choose a particular, um, you know, um, system that works for you. You can decide to be disseminating on a weekly basis, on a bi-weekly basis, monthly basis, yearly basis. So just take to whatever works for you. And then um, people on these platforms will get to know about your business when they listen to your podcast. Mm. So I, I hope that that helps as a process. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, we're working with Spotify just because it keeps everything simple, relatively yeah. speaking. It still work. Oh, did we talk about the transcript? Because we're also uh, converting the audio file into a transcript. Yeah. And then making that available, which is not mm. not what many pod podcasts do, but it helps mm. because we actually have listeners who are not listeners but readers. Mm -hmm. I've heard and yeah, and it's it's just good to um to provide also the transcript to the audience because yeah, I mean for it serves as an alternative. Yeah, it's an extra yeah. service. And it can also serve um, a follower who's, who, whose death or, or audio, what is the, what's the word, impaired for hearing, hearing impaired yeah. people. Mm. Yeah. Oh, and the other, so from a business angle, what we are also left to do is to turn the transcript into learning materials. Because what I was amazed by is how much wisdom there is in these conversations that the guests often share and where how deep sometimes the conversations go into certain topics. And we talk about anything that we're doing as a service also in workshops and trainings for researchers, librarians, um, publishers. So anything academic and science communication related. Um, so there's a lot of um, material that can also then be repurposed to other formats and developed into a course, I mean, as a starting point, of course, but then um, yeah. from there might also emerge course topics that we can mm -hmm. then offer to our um, followers. Yeah. Cool. Sure. <laughs> so they're going to business. So now what's your, what what's your experience so far with us, with other clients that you serve? And what's your um, plan for the future? So um, it, it's been interesting so far. Um, since the time I started as a, as a freelancer, even up until now that I started working with Access to Perspectives and Africa Archive, and then TCC Africa, and then one of the clients I'm working with. I think I've gathered so much experience working in these um, few years. So it, it's, it's, really, it's really been fun. It's really been... Um, I know also demanding, but um, I've actually learned a lot to to say the least. So um, my plan is to take these ideas that I've gathered, you know, in editing, in dissemination, in um, you know, 
uh, working on Canva by creating some kind of graphics, you know, all has to do with on the podcast. So my idea is to take it a, a step further by, you know, um, teaching people some of these ideas of podcasting. Mm. Um, there are so many people out there who don't actually know what the processes entail, right? So my step is to help teach people who know little or nothing about podcasting. And I've started that already. I was um, going through LinkedIn one day and then I saw the section that, you know, entails hosting podcasts, sorry, hosting events, right? Uh -huh. So I decided, okay, it's actually a good idea for me to, you know, use that as a platform to teach people who want to learn podcasting. So what I did was to, you know, fix a date for an event. And then I invited a lot of people, like I invited people in their hundreds, like I think uh, as much as 300, 400 people. And then um, aside from that, <laughs> then 900 people signed up for it. Apart from those, I invited over 900 people signed up for it. And wow. I held the event, um, I think, on the 1st of May. Mm -hmm. Right, even though not as much people turned up on that particular day, but then I I held the events and then taught people how to you know start up their own podcast from scratch till it's disseminated out there to the listeners. And those who attended the events were just so happy they 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 took part in the events, and uh, so many of them are still even up until today are still reaching out to me, and you know they want me to help them start up their podcast. I'm in talks with like um. I think one or two people or three, yes. Um, though we are still at the early stage, we've not finalized anything yet. We are still mm -hmm. talking to see how we can, you know, how I can help them, um, you know, create their podcasts. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 been it's been amazing. Wow. And then it so happened that so many so many people missed out also on the events and they kept you know sending me messages that they want me to like um. Um, hold another event for them, which I did. I um, scheduled another event for them, like um, I think two weeks later, and then have those who missed out on the first one, you know, join the events. And I still, you know, did the same thing for them. I explained mm -hmm. all of the processes involved in the, uh, creating the podcast from scratch. Mm -hmm. For that second event, I recorded it and I shared it to those who missed out on the second and the first event as well. So nice. it's 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 been great so far, and um, aside from podcasting, one other plans I one other plan I have is to, you know, build or own a big company that is centered around not just tech but mainly tech. Uh, uh, I want it to be in such a way that. I have departments for you know different things. I would want to have an IT department that is in charge of um creating or building programs, creating apps, you know, mm -hmm. um, programming in general, right? WordPress and all of those. And then I I would also like to have a department like uh, maybe a studio that will be involved in, um, you know, music production, movie production, and um, events hosting, voiceover recordings, and those aspects. And then probably have another section that will have to do with some um, graphic designs, video editing, and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's all in my plan to like have that kind of setup. Wow. But it's a gradual process, I'm, I'm still starting. So. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to like picking up or taking it to the next level. Yeah. I know it's not going to I know it's not going to come easy, but that's uh, my plan. <laughs> but you have a goal. That's excellent. Yeah. Because many yeah. people just say, Oh, I want to be successful, but they don't know mm -hmm. what they want to be successful with. And yeah, that's, that's not true. often easy to find, like a mm -hmm. destination or like yeah. uh somewhere in the future where you see yourself, but you you obviously have a clear vision for yourself. Yeah. And have you written this down? Yeah, the... I, I I have it written down, but I just made a sketch of how I want it to look like. 
Well, okay, that's good. So you are already three steps ahead. Because to yeah. have this idea and vision is one thing, but then put in a paper, mm. and even if it's just a note with, that they put up on your wall behind your computer screen, where yeah. you can see it every day, what you're working for, it's where you're getting up. That's the way to be successful. Yeah. Oh, nice. It's so good to hear. And how many people you've reached with and encouraged to share their own stories through podcasts. Yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah. I also found like when we started this podcast, it's so fulfilling because it allows me to talk to people whom I admire, who I find interesting, who share my vision of what I think is important and the work that I do. And I can just invite people who, like by my personal preference and have casual conversations about the topic that we both like we all care about. Yeah. So I would like to ask you now, as an observer, as a, like a person who's so on the topic from a technical aspect now, what can you can you maybe do you have a, an assessment of how you see the scholarly uh, world or like the academic sector from the conversations you've listened to that we are processing? Like, what is your image now, or how do you see academia through the lens of our conversations that we're having? Yeah, I I, I see it as um, a beautiful world. Why? Because um, each and every of the guests on the show actually speaks well of what they are doing like. They speak positive of the scholarly world, right? And in fact, this is the first time I'm being exposed to the world of open science, open access, and all of those um, scholarly terms. And I have actually found it amazing because one, to even talk about open access and open science, I, I think it's it's a great movement and it's a great idea because it, it helps to give back to the society, right? Because you're, you're making materials open well, maybe not entirely open, but you're you're giving out to you're giving out information to people who would need them, right, and then benefits from them. And I think it's it's a it's a beautiful thing. And I've actually learned a lot on um, the scholarly world, working as um the editor of a podcast that is mm -hmm. related to the scholarly world. I've I've, I've come to uh, know more about universities and how they operate have uh, come to understand um even like um some some topics you know that are related to you know the scholarly world and all of that so i think it's it's been interesting so far mm. yeah yeah and also the challenges like there's not a perfect system yeah. In open science, there's a lot of conversations about how we need to fix academia because um, there's so many challenges now. But the way I tend to see it, like there's not we're the generation who is in charge, and you're also contributing from a technical aspect by facilitating these conversations to reach an audience. Yeah. And people who are, we are inviting to the show all have a stake and are actors in mm. shaping the system so to make sure that i mean the system which is academia to make sure that it can in the best possible way serve its purpose which is to inform society so that societies can um, allow people to interact with each other peacefully to find mm. ways to live on this planet without killing it <laughs> where we're currently not sure if that's ever going to happen, but um, <laughs> there's still hope. <laughs> so, yeah. And then, is it, I don't know if the question is a bit too big to ask, but what, what from, is there something from the conversations you've listened to? And don't worry if not, because it might not be too obvious, um, yeah. that you, you've taken to, onto your own, life maybe also now with a business decision that you want to grow and build your own company i don't know i'm just putting this out you don't have to answer 
because I'm just yeah. asking because you've already said like how much mm -hmm. like the opportunity of engaging ourselves in certain mm -hmm. work placements, certain topics, how this then allows us to grow as individuals mm -hmm. and as professionals. So I think what I'm trying to ask is, is there something that you've learned on the job working with us that you can see you can apply to your own um, to your own activities? Which you've already said, like, yes, the podcasting, you can teach others now to. Mm -hmm. hmm. So again, don't worry about that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... Do I have one? Let me see. Um, of course, if if I haven't learned anything, I think um, I I have learned the fact that most of these um people we've had on the show, interviewees, have um been professional. You know, like you you see in in the way they narrates everything about their you know their field it's very professional and it's it's very organized if if i haven't learned anything i think um i've learned that and uh i can always um, apply that to my business what exactly like being professional and being organized in what i do but what okay but what do you mean yeah. by professional like um you know, standing out, you know, is that being a uh, charge. Is it taking yes, charge? Yeah, like 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 taking charge, standing out and make sure you're representing well in your field. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a good difference. Yeah. yeah. Was there one episode that comes to mind which had a lasting effect because you find the guest interesting or the conversation where it was going? Yeah, I, I think um the the last uh, the last podcast was it the last or the second or the last the one with um Flavio Azevedo. Uh huh. Azevedo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and um, I was actually encouraged by the fact that he had a mission and um he actually walked towards his goal to achieve his organization. That's the the fourth organization. I believe mm -hmm. I believe that's correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So he achieved that alongside his partner. So um I, I think I think that's um that's an aspect I I, I like as well. Mm. You you can go up go and reach whatever goal you you know desire to reach. Yeah, also what now that you mentioned him, what I found really um so very captivating is the way he was humble to receive yeah. a tenure track position he's now an assistant professor in the netherlands yeah. which he yeah. never thought he would ever achieve in his lifetime with the journey yeah. look and how he found himself um growing up in I think it's brazil mm. um but then still by following his dreams and and his passion what he's mm important to him and he didn't think there was space for that in academia but now there is mm -hmm. so that's basically a lesson and the way he's so humble about it and appreciative of the opportunity yeah is like that's really left me with a lot of inspiration and also for mm -hmm. others not only for myself but you know to, to inspire whoever hears his story that mm -hmm. anything is really possible as long as you stay true to yourself and your ideals yeah. and values that you that you believe in. So mm -hmm. there's no need to compromise the values in order to have a successful life and also mm -hmm. a life where you can sustain your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So cool. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So let me just end with I hope that we'll continue working together as much as mm -hmm. I wish you all the best for your own business growth and I know we will part ways one one, one day <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but I just hope that we'll find that you will find time to stick around for some time longer okay. as long as it serves you to work with us sure 
Thank you so much for all the work that you put into this podcast and to both these organizations called Access to Perspectives and Africa Archive. Yeah. We are gaining a lot of us. We didn't talk about the social media work, but maybe yeah. that's for another behind the scenes um, bonus episode. Um, but yeah, all of us on your journey and well, we'll be in touch either way because we have work to do. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks for sharing with us. Thank you. Luca. Thanks. Thanks, Jill. It's indeed a my pleasure to have joined the session. And I am happy that I'm appearing on I'm appearing as a guest on the podcast I edit. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I can put this editing for, for you. So <laughs> relax. Thank on. you. See you. Bye.